Hi, my name is Fran McNeil. I'm a significant business results coach, speaker, and author of a book entitled Significant From Frustrated to Fantastic Inspirational Stories for the Entrepreneurial Woman. Sure, I, I always I love that question. How did I get involved in all the significant things that I do? Um, there's really two answers. The first is my parents are phenomenal people. Um, they're very loving, they're very caring, they're very directive, um, and they really helped my sisters and I be focused. So I think in a large part they are significant, and um, that is why, as a byproduct of them, um, I feel that I'm, I'm really destined to carry on that legacy. The second part is I've been really fortunate to have educational experiences, work experiences, um, and even challenges that have encouraged me to think positively, to think about others, and to really give back. And so being an entrepreneur really at the heart is providing a service to help others relieve a pain and to do so in a way that they feel comfortable about coming back to you uh, again and again and referring. So entrepreneurship is really the art and practice of service. That is a great question and, and I'm often asked that. Significant certainly can be broken down into its Latin roots. And in English, if you look at the word, and people often have difficulty spelling significant, I ask them to think about this. It starts with a sign, S-I-G-N. And then the little word, if, which is offering an empowering word, or it could be a showstopper. And then I, and then the word can, which again is a very little word. And then it ends with a T. And that T often stands for trust. So significant is really about receiving the sign. If I can, trust, and for many it's trust in God. For others, it's trust in the belief that the gifts they've been given are the ones that they're due to share. And for others, it's trusting in the fact that the universe is really built up of people that at their core are great people and that each of us has a responsibility to bring out the best in others. And best has been used a lot, um, phenomenal. Uh, Maya Angelou used the word phenomenal. Um, so I wanted to go with a word that, again, often people mispronounce, maybe spell incorrectly, yet at its core calls people to be their best. Well, I certainly shared parts of my journey, um, and initially I really was the daughter of my parents, so I was a student <laughs> very early on. Um, and then in school and in work experiences, I really learned how to take skills to serve others. One of the challenges that I never thought I would have to face was the challenge of experiencing breast cancer. Um, and in the breast cancer treatment, I had chemotherapy, which two days after I stopped chemotherapy, I experienced a stroke. And so that stroke paralyzed me on the left side of my body for two weeks and had me hospitalized for 32 days. And it was after that experience of literally being paralyzed, not able to move, fortunately, as the oldest of four daughters, um, able to speak, but not being able to move really gave me opportunity to pause and reflect. And after that, I decided that many of the stories that I had experienced, many of the lessons that I had learned, um, I had a responsibility to write them down. Um, because writing is one form that allows a story to be preserved. With modern technology, there's video, um, you can use chatting and texting, but books are still very powerful. And so the book that I've chosen to wrote focuses in part on my experience as a breast cancer conqueror and stroke conqueror, 
but in, in many ways reflects 20 elements of different parts of my life, whether it's corporate or volunteer or social or entrepreneurial. And then because I am a facilitator, a coach, after each story, there are questions. Because in life, hearing someone's story should prompt you to reflect on your own. And so literally as a teacher, I encode in my book, after each chapter, a series of questions so that the individual reading it can ask themselves. If they're sharing the book with someone else, they can ask a friend, and the dialogue can continue. Sure, sure, I am a significant business results coach, and as a coach, my primary responsibility is to intently and responsibly commit to listening. Um, that's first, I listen. And then I really ask questions designed around a person's significant business result that they want to achieve. I typically work with people in 90-day spurts. Um, research has shown that in terms of motivation, goal setting, and having successful accomplishments of small steps, 90 days or three months is very, very powerful. And um, as an entrepreneur, because I help people identify the result that's significant, it is a lot easier for me to do what I call help them focus their energy for action. Entrepreneurship, succeeding at goals, is first about mindset. It's about identifying what I call the five Ps. Passion is certainly important. What's your internal passion and what's the passion uh, for those that you're uh, about to serve? Purpose is critical. Why are you doing it? What are you doing? Um, then setting up a plan. How will you do it? Making sure that you perform. So getting it done. You can say you're going to do it, but let's get it done. And then finally, there is really profitability. And that can certainly in the business context be all about money. But it also, profitability can be a way of measuring the impact that you achieve. So as an entrepreneur, I help other entrepreneurs achieve significant business results. And I do that through listening, through questioning, through holding people accountable. People will say I'm tough, I'm honest, and I care. And that's what a coach does, whether on the football field or you know, as a wrestling coach, both of those I have not been, um, uh, or as a business coach. Absolutely. In any interaction, and so many of our interactions are now technology-based, but in any interaction, it really is first about relationship building. It's about rapport. It's about finding common ground. Um, you use the word relatability. So I am very upfront about who I am. I'm an African-American woman who has experienced challenges throughout my life, many of which readers can relate to. It may not be a health challenge. It may be a work challenge. I have a chapter in my book where I talk about being the invisible woman um, in reference to Ralph Ellison's The Invisible Man. Um, shocking how you can be a black female in a room of predominantly white folks in a corporate arena, and yet you're not seen um, when you speak up, when you share. However, the content of what you share is then repeated by someone else, a white male, and then the idea is valid, it's super. Um, you know, you're not seen when you come in early, but you're seen when you come in late. So the, the concept of perception um, is, is part of a relatability that I think others um, can connect with. And uh, the stories are short, so that people don't have to read a lot of words in order to connect. In each coaching session, I follow a protocol. 
So I follow a process that's repeatable so that I can guarantee my clients consistency. Um, and then it makes it a lot easier for us to track results. One of the things I do is I ask people once we've set our goal, what's working well? What challenges do you need? What challenges do you have? And what support do you need? Those three questions always get asked in every coaching session because they're a way of helping focus and retarget someone who may be coming in from a bad meeting, a great meeting, um, some crisis, etc. And then at the end of each session, I always ask um, what worked well about the session, what was meaningful and relevant, and what action are you going to take? Um, because I'm not a counselor, it is not about just hearing them um, and or giving them a chance to express themselves. And both of those are elements of coaching. I am holding people accountable for expressing their dreams, for translating them into a goal, and then to take action. And so I consistently ask people, what action steps are you going to take? I will say that when I work with people, whether it's on the stage, one-on-one, -on -one, um, or in a large group, there are things that I often say. One is that business is about the three R's. It's about relationships, it's about results, and it's about revenue. And relationships intentionally come first because people don't do business with someone that they don't like or don't trust. It's about results because at every level you have to prove yourself. Prove yourself worthy of their attention. Prove yourself that you have common ground, um, that there's empathy and interest. And prove yourself that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. And then after that, comes the revenues. And again, like profits, they don't necessarily always have to come in the form of dollars and cents, um, but they can come in the form of renewed relationships, of referrals, of repeat business. So the three R's are absolutely critical. I do encourage people in almost everything I say and do to think about the five significant principles. They're chapter kind of markers or milestones in my book. Um, and the first one is get going. Whether you're an entrepreneurial woman, which may, which may often means you may not be an entrepreneur in practice, but in what you're doing, there is an entrepreneurial, a creative element, and there is a desire to take something from a passion and put it into a purposeful action that serves others. So get going. Stop talking about what you could do or should do. Start it in one small step. The second is to embrace opportunity. Sometimes instances occur, things happen, and entrepreneurialism is often about a mindset. So to the degree that something happens and you go, oh my goodness, it happened to me. Oh my goodness, it's terrible. You can focus on the negative or you can focus on the positive. So look for, no matter how small, the positive and view that as an opportunity. Breast cancer I viewed as an opportunity to be empathetic and also to listen to my body, which being younger, I took for granted. Um, when I was in the hospital, it was an opportunity, because I was lying in bed, um, to observe customer service. And in fact, I filled out so many customer service feedback forms at Thomas Jefferson Hospital that a year later, the president of Thomas Jefferson asked me to come back and speak at their employee recognition um, uh, breakfast because I had documented what customer service and the customer experience was from my bedside. Um, so embracing opportunity is, is important. The third is find support. It's very difficult to do anything on your own. We're in a house of worship right now, um, so support can come from many places, um, but a big part of support is asking for support. The fourth is accept love. 
not E-X-C-E-P-T, so not accept, but accept, A-C-C-E-P-T. So accept love. Understand that people are continually giving themselves, giving of themselves, and giving the gift of being there. And the final principle is be significant. Look for those signs. If I can, trust others, trust myself, trust that I have worth, trust that I am here to give, trust that I am significant. Gaps often exist in nature. Um, they often present themselves as rivers. And there's a bank on one side, and then a bank on another side, and then there's a river. What's powerful is that people can choose to swim across, or people can choose to build a bridge. Um, a coach helps people build bridges between themselves and their customers. African American women and African American men as entrepreneurs often experience lack of confidence, lack of capital, lack of connections, and as a result may feel undervalued. And then they often sort of go to their own corners and don't necessarily work together. I can choose to focus on the negative. What I do find is that there are lots of instances, whether it's through the school system, whether it's through churches, whether it's through um, sororities, fraternities, uh, nonprofit or professional organizations, of literally a single individual or groups of individuals saying, let me reach back now that I've learned something. And I purposely didn't say achieve, but I've learned something and share it with someone else that's about the business of entrepreneurship. Even when I teach classes, I make a point if there's a class of 20 people or there's a workshop, in addition to collecting business cards, I always ask each person to introduce themselves and share their 30 second introduction. I try to avoid the word pitch because trash gets pitched, baseballs get pitched, um, and so it's an introduction because it's about a conversation. Um, I also take people's business cards and I try to find a way to do business with each person. Sometimes that person isn't ready for an actual dollar to dollar transaction. But if I can ask them, do you have your bio, your 100 word bio, and it takes three weeks for a response, the gift that I give them towards moving them towards entrepreneurship is helping them get that bio prepared. Um, so African American women and African American men certainly have the opportunity to close that gap. It, it can begin with recognizing the entrepreneurial skills that each other has and then also beginning the process of doing business. Asking what is your business? Asking what support do you need? Um, introducing people to each other's network and finding ways to connect people with the person that they most want to sell to. That's a powerful question. I think the story that I haven't written is the story that really um, takes the significant stories of different groups of people and pu puts them into an anthology format. So my commitment was first to share. I, I, I believe that I lead by example. Um, I live courageously and I live in a significant manner. So I wanted to write my story, provide questions, and encourage others to reflect. The books that are waiting to be written by myself and others in a collaborative form are the significant stories of African American women, of African American men, um, of young people. I meet a lot of young entrepreneurs. So I happen to be in the room with a young entrepreneur um, who is pursuing her dream. And so that's, those are the books, I would make it plural, that um, are yet to be written and co-authored um, by myself, and with others.
Sure. My most current project is significant TV. Um, I have a goal of interviewing 80 entrepreneurs. I get to ask questions and hear entrepreneurs share their entrepreneurial stories. I continue to work on the Significant Business Results radio show. As you identified, a project that I am in the process of moving from an idea is continuing the series, the Significant series, um, interviewing entrepreneurs and getting their significant stories into book form. So people can get in touch with me through my website, www.franmcneil.com. And it's important to note that I spell my name Fran, F-R-A-N-N-E-M-C-N-E-A-L. Indicator. Enough said on that. Yo, what's up? You know what it is. It's your man, the indicator. How? How? Tone in, man.